Today on Home Theater Fanatics, we're gonna take a deep dive into the Keth LS50 Wireless 2s and the KC62 subwoofer. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, I'm joined by Mike of Audio Architects. What's going on, everybody? Glad to have you on the show today, Mike. Thanks for inviting and, me. Yeah, and we're gonna jump deep into Kef World, and I love Kef World. Um, they're some of my favorite speakers, but before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you'll be notified. And I'm curious about what your opinion is. Are you into this stuff as much as I am? I don't, are you into it as much as I am? I don't Well, I, I, cause I'm into it a lot. I've already got a chance to kind of, I cheated because we did the powered bookshelf battle yeah. not too long ago and we featured these. So I've already had an initial opinion and I, I, I know how they sound. I know how they look. So I think this is going to be a fun video because yeah. we kind of already have experience with the whole setup. So yeah, let's rock and roll. Right on. And I think a good way to get started is to quickly go over the specifications of the speakers so that you know exactly what's going on. The LS50 Wireless 2 is an all-in-one speaker system that streams virtually from any source by leveraging AirPlay 2 or Chromecast. On the front of the speaker, you'll find the UniQ driver array. This array features a five and a quarter inch aluminum mid-range driver and a one inch tweeter. The one inch tweeter is mated to the KEF metamaterial absorption technology. Frequency response for these drivers is approximately 45 Hertz to 28 kilohertz. On the rear of the speaker, you'll find the amplifier and input and output connections. Amplification is rated at 280 watts per low frequency driver and 100 watts per high frequency driver. That's right, there are four channels. Each amplifier has two channels, one channel for the lows and one channel for the highs. Inputs include an HDMI eARC connector, Toslink Optical, Digital Coax, a three and a half millimeter auxiliary input, USB type A, and a RJ45 ethernet connector. On the output side of the house, you'll find an RCA subwoofer output on each speaker. Of interest, the speakers are room ready and also support streaming services such as Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, QQ Music, Tidal, Cobuzz, Deezer, etc., etc. They've got just about everything that you could think of. Switching gears, now we'll take a look at the KC62 subwoofer. This subwoofer features two six and a half inch drivers powered by a thousand RMS watts of class D power. The two drivers are coupled together using the Unicore technology. This means they share a single magnet system. The rated frequency response is from 11 Hertz to 200 Hertz. Okay, so now that you know kind of what's going on with these speakers, we want to talk a little bit about the whys, right? And I think people are very familiar with buying speakers and buying an amplifier and some kind of source device. But when you move into the powered world, things get a little bit different because you don't have to buy all those pieces, do you? Right. Um, it does uh, kind of maximize your budget. Uh, so having a powered speaker allows you to kind of, I mean, basically combine your right, everything just gets your amplifier, your speaker, everything. Yeah, so I think it's an advantage because if someone's on a budget, this would be a great way to go and a good thing to take into consideration rather than trying to buy cheap bookshelf speakers and a cheap amp. Right, instead, you could just kind of combine that budget and get a solid pair of powered bookshelf speakers. Right on, and another reason that I kind of like the powered concept. Um, and, you know, I think if you're going down the pure audiophile route, this probably isn't the right route for you. However, the sound of these is amazing and we'll get to that. But this allows you to have a very simple system that's very easy to deal with. Uh, meaning you can take these two speakers and then if you want to sub, add in something like the KC62, put it anywhere and you have an instant system. You don't have to worry so much about where do I get cabling from? How do I set this stuff up? You just buy them, set them down, install the app on your phone mm -hmm. and you're really, really good to go. And you know, if you're not super deep into the audio world, you don't have to worry about what's the right source, what's the right amp. You know that everything that you purchase has been already designed by Kef and it works together really, really well. You're gonna think I'm crazy for saying this, but I think this type of speaker is the ultimate replacement for what we had in the 
late 90s, early 2000s for those all-in-one systems. Oh yeah, those so, were horrible and these are awesome. Right. Yeah, but, totally. But back then we didn't think they were horrible. Back, True. Back then that's all we had. And they were basic for their time, I think. But uh, what I think is rad is that you don't need a source. Well, you, you need a phone. Right, you need something to run the app on. Right, you need a phone. But if you have a phone, you have, you know, all the absolute, you know, inputs you need on here. Um, it's really an all-in-one package. Yeah. And that's what I think is most advantageous about this speaker in particular, because there's other powered speakers out there that don't have, that aren't as feature rich as these. Uh, I think these actually went out of, I think Kef went out of their way on this time around, but I think it's cool because all in yeah. one, easy, just plug and play. And another, another item to call out that's fairly unique to the powered speaker world is uh, the use of HDMI eARC inputs on the back. So if you notice on the back of the speaker, there's an eARC input. And what that will allow you to do is when you have a television, you can take these two speakers and instead of buying a soundbar, buy these, set beside your television, plug in your HDMI cable, and you're done, mm. right? That, that's it, you don't have to worry about anything. Just go change the settings in the television, tell it to output, and uh, select the source here, and your television game is gonna be taken up several notches, because right. this stuff sounds great. I mean, as home theater fanatics, I'm sure Giles will always recommend to you you know, doing the whole, nine, at, at the very minimum. 9.1.6. Uh, yeah, at the yeah, very minimum of 5.2, but, uh, which is what I have, but I mean, yeah. But this is definitely a huge step up from a soundbar. Well, and you know, to test that, I took these and I put in my living room, which is where we're at now, on the, on the wall behind the, the camera is the screen, and I've got a 100 inch screen with an ultra short, uh, short throw projector, and I use these in stereo mode, in, uh, in 2.1 mode with the KC62 sub here, for, I don't know, three weeks mm. listening, and uh, I was completely satisfied. Now, it doesn't give you a full theater experience, but for my casual watching, and then when I wanted to listen to music, it was absolutely outstanding for that use case. Um, so, that yeah, I think those are some reasons why you might want to go with powered. Um, and then from a cost point of view, you know, I, I hate to call out cost because they always change and then people will invariably put down in the notes that you're wrong about the cost. But you know, these are somewhere north of $2,000 for the, for the pair. And for that kind of money, when you get everything you need, it, it really justifies the cost, especially with the sound quality that you get out of the units. So let's, let's jump a little bit into the setup and configuration of, yeah. of the units. So um, out of the box, you'll get the two speakers, you'll get a remote control. You, there's an app that you can download and that's pretty much all there is. There's a cable that you can use to cross connect these or that can be done wirelessly. I just elected to use the cable because I, I'm still a bit old school, but you can do this wirelessly if you need to. You have the ability to switch the left and right. So if for some reason you set them up and you did it backwards or something, don't fret. Or if you wanna have your control panel on a specific side of your room, um, you can set whichever one you want on the left or right. Now, all of the setup is done in the app um, and everything that you would think that's in the app will be there. One cool feature is that the subwoofer, there are a ton of settings around the sub. So you can manually set your crossover and, and all of your other configuration. However, if you use a KEF sub, uh, there are a number of presets inside of the configuration for, for these wireless twos that allows you to select the sub that you have and it will set everything up for you. Um, also, on the back of these, they each have an RCA output, so you can run dual subs using the output from either of these. So you can set this as mono, you can set it for two stubs, subs. I'm not sure about the stereo piece. I don't, I don't know if it will link one up to the other. However, there is an output on both, and that's something that we'll dig in a little bit deeper and see if we can figure that out. But You would think. You, you would think, you would think. But Otherwise, why would there be a... Well, sometimes you want to put a sub on the left side of the room and the speaker that's on the left side, if you don't have a sub output on it, then you're running a cable crazy to get it to where it needs to go. So it's nice having a sub out on both of the units, uh, just like you can swap the left and right on the unit. So it makes them very flexible. Um, and I guess another thing to call out around the configuration and the, the build of these is that each speaker has its own amplifier. So you're not running an amp out of your main uh, speaker and then using speaker cable to power this one. You have to plug electricity into both of these, but that means there's an amp here 
and an amp here. I think it's more convenient this way. It, it is very convenient that way. Uh, I mean, there, you can juggle some balls and say it's convenient because you know you got to amp at each one. But then what happens if one of the amps fails? And is it better just to have one amp and if it fails, it's all down instead of one? So there are two that could. I don't know. So that I mean, that's that's kind of up in the air. My preference though is for the way this is set up um, and being able to have sub outs and all that kind of stuff in each speaker. Very, very true, Giles. One thing I really like that Kef does is they make them pretty, so. Fit and finish. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's uh, let's get into that. That is the, always the first thing that kind of uh, catches my eye with Kef, is the fact that they put so much time and effort into aesthetics. Not only yeah, do I'll they- turn this one around. Well, obviously not only do they sound, they sound, you know, good, but they just look they, they're stunning really good just the way they made them look and that's solid yeah i mean there there's no resonance here at all yeah. they're, they're completely so, dead not only did they make it a make the aesthetics functional but they made it just beautiful 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 speakers yeah so a, a few comments there um you know they they have some interesting color choices so this is kind of the the silver grayish gunmetal you know they've got black but they also have a, a very interesting blue and a very interesting red color mm -hmm. and then you can see the maroon that they have on the uh on the edge detail here which is also very nice um, and then the black uh heat sink for the amplifier itself it all works together the uh touch screen display here on the top the controls is some type i is it a polymer resin maybe? Um, I, maybe it's glass, I can't really tell for sure. Um, it's, it's good enough that I can't tell the difference, so it, it might be glass. Feels like glass. Yeah, it's, it's nice, it's nice. And then, you know, they have the very discreet silk screen logos here on the top, uh, and you know, the tangerine waveguide on the front. So aesthetically, um, they're very, very nice, uh, especially I really like the curve on the front. Um, it's a modern looking speaker, and I think it really adds to decor. If you get uh, some very nice uh, stands for these, it really can make a statement in a room. So, right. um, you know, I would uh, I would like to see these like on a pair of solid steels, the the tripods, uh, and those those are gorgeous. And I think these would look really really good sitting on top of those. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the KC62 now. And uh, this is a very interesting piece of equipment. And I think it's probably got a niche use case. Um, and it really applies to what we were just talking about when we were talking about the aesthetics, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, this matches very well. Uh, obviously I have this one in black, but you can get these in coordinating colors if you wanted to. Um, but this is very small. It's a dual six and a half inch driver subwoofer using the Unicore technology from Kef. So basically, this is kind of like two subs stuck on one magnet working together, um, and that allows it to reduce the amount of space that's needed inside of the box for the components and to shrink everything down. Um, and this, uh, this, this picks up, it feels like a block of lead when you lift it, it's extremely heavy. They're all very, very heavy, but this one is particularly heavy. The thing about this speaker, and I think, you know, once you get past the aesthetics, because it looks good and the cones are awesome, um, I think everyone is gonna ask, you know, what's the performance like? Um, you know, it is two six and a halves, and, uh, you know, the first thing that everybody's always said to me is, what can it really do? Um, and, you know, from a subjective point of view, I'm not gonna go into REW measurements on this, uh, the subwoofer, does add presence to these speakers. Um, however, from my point of view, it's not a, oh my God, I just hooked up 215s and this thing is thumping, right? It, it does not do that, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is definitely for folks that want to add subtle low end extension onto their, uh, to their mains and they don't want to use a lot of space to do that. Uh, so would I run these in a dedicated home theater where I wanted to get some tactile response out of my sofa? No. Um, in a living room where I'm watching television um, and I don't want to you know, wake up the neighborhood, would I run this? All day long, absolutely. So I think you know, your opinion of this really is going to be informed by your use case. What do you think, Mike? Well, Giles, I, I think this is going to boil down to uh, positioning uh, your speaker. Uh, I've had six and a half uh, out of sound bars before, and I, I know I've told you this story, but the Vizio. The Vizio yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it was a downfiring uh, subwoofer, but six and a half. And depending on where I positioned it in the room, I actually got a really good bass response. So I feel that if this little guy is positioned correctly, you could get 
a surprising amount of bass out of this small little package. Sure, sure. Uh, however, you know, obviously directly or it's not going to have the same effect as a as, as what we're normally used to. But I mean, this small form factor seems to be the trend right now with other brands like SVS, Velodyne, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of other companies are starting to kind of realize, hey, we need to make something for someone that either lives in an apartment or uh, is space conscious or or is looking just, for some for the aesthetics right right yeah is looking for something just a little just a little smaller. form over function maybe. yeah all right giles i think we need to let everybody know what type of music we use to test these speakers so i listen to a lot of different music on these from a lot of different genres but there are a few pieces that i do want to call out that are of particular interest so there's a new group called well, I don't guess they're a new group, but they were new to me, called A Bad Think, and uh, particularly a song called Too Far Gone. Um, and they're doing Dolby Atmos mixes now, which in, in this 2.1 set, you know, isn't ground shaking, but it's kind of cool to listen to it here and then go down into a theater and do a comparison. But, uh, you know, I use that song as the first one to test with, and, and I really like that. Uh, you know, I shifted gears a little bit, moved over to a little bit of Radiohead, uh, everything in its right place. And if you've not heard that song, it's absolutely killer. I mean, you know, some people say that that song makes everything sound good. And I guess to a certain degree, maybe that's true. But I like to listen for the, uh, you know, the width of the soundstage with that song in particular. And man, it, it felt like it was wider than the speakers were spaced. I mean, it was it was really, really wide. So uh, those are the two that I particularly enjoyed on these. What about you? Well, um, I wanted to listen to the uh, Symphony Orchestra of Metallica, the s and Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I really love the way they've incorpor they incorporated the, I think it's the London Symphony with, I could be wrong. I have no idea. It, uh, but it, it is a symphony that Metallica did. So I, I incorporated that, and I, I really like classical music out of these. I think these these are spectacular for some nice classical or if you're listening to a soundtrack like the inter, I tried it on the Interstellar soundtrack. Granted, the bass wasn't exactly what I was I was hoping for. Yeah, that, that but, those tones coming out of the yeah, pipe organ are hard. But at the same time, they played it. They played the the instruments very well. Good separation of the instruments in the you know in the orchestra. I loved it. You know, one, one thing that that does bring to mind, and I wasn't gonna call it out until you said that, but um, there's an arrangement of Claire de Lune by WC, I think I said that right, um, that I listened to on these, and it was just absolutely stunning. So that's one of my favorite pieces of piano classical music. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not super grounded in, in classical music, but that one I really mm. particularly enjoy, and it sounded stunning mm. out of these guys. And, you know, I, I guess also just to cover back over generalities, um, I, I think these are good at everything. The only place where I think you're going to suffer is for music where the, it's got subterranean bass. So, you know, Curtain Shaker, probably not the right song for these. Agreed. So let's talk a little bit about the sound. So what, what do you think? Well, as you know, we have tested these before. Uh, I feel kept speakers in general have very nice mid-range and a very mellow and nice top end. I think the mid-range was the shining point for these speakers, um, along with a nice top end. Where they did struggle a little bit was the bass, but then when incorporating this little guy, mm -hmm. position well, uh, I think it's the total package. So I, I, I wouldn't be listening to heavy rap or EDM out of these. Uh, however, uh, you know, nice rock, uh, classical, stuff like that, I think would really, really benefit from these speakers. Yeah, I, I agree with, with all those things. So, um, you know, with the inclusion of the Meta Material in, in these units, so just like the LS50 Meta 2s, um, this is the powered version of that speaker, so to speak. It includes the new Meta Material, uh, which, you know, absorbs those internal frequencies and gives you a little less distortion, a little bit better clarity. Um, they, they sound better than the old version, for sure. Um, and I agree that the mid-range, especially with vocals, is the defining characteristic for these for me. I mean, that's, when I think of these speakers, I think of really, really good mid-range and vocals. Um, and you're right, that is kind of general to all of the KEF equipment that I've had experience with in the past. The top is nice and mellow. It doesn't kind of go over the top and, and punch you and scratch you in the face and leave those marks down as you listen to it. Um, you know, I could listen to these all day long without any fatigue. Um, and 
you know, the sub does bring in that subtle low end that you need, uh, but man, you're not gonna take these, like you said, to a concert and, you know, blow the door off of anything. Um, but a totally adequate base for watching televisions, movies in my living room in a 2.1 setup. Um, you know, the, the vocals were great, very revealing speakers. Um, amplification is built in, it's all class D. Um, it doesn't scream class D at me. It doesn't say, oh, I'm super analytic and have that blue color of sound if that makes any sense to you because that's, that's how it feels to me when I get into a very clinical style of class D amplifier. This doesn't, um, you know, go that far and swing the pendulum over into the surgical precision type of amplifier sound. Uh, and, and maybe it's just a good match of the amplifier with the drivers to, to give you that kind of sweet mid-range sound. But uh, for me, it's a, a very good experience. I thought it was a win. Yeah. I thought it was a win. I think these are great speakers. Um, like we said, the sub isn't, you know, isn't for heavy home theater use. It's just for um, just creating a slight atmosphere of low end. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I think it's a, it was a win. I, I really enjoyed these speakers. I think this is, a great buy, uh, I think perfect consumer for this would be someone you know wants to just enjoy themselves and listen and immerse themselves in some music. The soundstage and imaging was beautiful on it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, very um, solid, very solid uh, center image, very wide soundstage that has some depth to it as well. Right on. So we'll move on and have the final word. So my final word is that I highly recommend these. They sound very good. Uh, excellent mid-range vocals are absolutely stupendous on the low end they're competent enough to stand alone and i wasn't heartbroken because sometimes i am heartbroken when i listen to bookshelf speakers or stand mounts uh and just the i'm crushed at the lack of uh, of low end these were competent adding in the kc62 uh, push them over the edge uh, and move them into the realm of, okay, I'm, I'm happy, I, I'm good. Um, like I said, this isn't an 18 inch five hertz subwoofer. Uh, it's not designed to be such, um, but it is very, very good at music reproduction and uh, light home media use. Um, maybe two of these would be the answer. Uh, I'm not sure what that would be like, but um, as a whole, as a set, absolutely worth the investment of money to put into these, especially considering the aesthetics. Sure, it's not considerably expensive. It's not super out of, you know, people's range. Yeah. So I think these would be a good investment if you're looking for something long-term. Um, I think this is a lot of forward-thinking technology inside both of these. So I'm sure uh, in the future, you could probably get firmware updates and stuff like oh, that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And the app is very intuitive as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I think these are great. I think this is a great package. I think. They did a good job. Yep. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure to like and subscribe. Jump over to Audio Architects. Like and subscribe there as well. Uh, so you'll be notified when all of the new hot content comes out. And don't forget, every Tuesday night is Home Theater Fanatics Live. And on some evenings, I'm even lucky enough to have Mike jump in with me uh, for Content Corner. So you can find him there as well. All of my content information is below. And as always, thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Dude.